In the first section of the course, you learned anonymous functions. In this lesson, we're going to talk about anonymous classes because PHP also has anonymous classes. And you guessed it right, anonymous classes do not have a name. You can create an anonymous class by using the class keyword combined with the new keyword. So if we go in here, we can create an object using an anonymous class. So we would use the new keyword and then the class keyword without the name and then open close curly braces with a semicolon and then you put your regular class structure inside these curly braces. Let's var dump object and see what we get. And we get an object of an anonymous class. Anonymous classes can also accept arguments through the constructor. So as you notice, I did not use parentheses here, but you could use parentheses and pass down the arguments to the constructor. So we could pass one, two, and three, and we could create a constructor here that accepts three arguments. So we could do X, Y, and Z. Now we could actually turn these into properties and I will use the property promotion feature which will also work in anonymous class. So I'll make these properties public and now if we var dump the object we see that it has three properties X, Y, Z with the values of one, two, and three. Anonymous classes can also use inheritance and extend other classes. You can also implement interfaces, use traits, and so on, just like a regular class. So if we had an interface, we could do implement my interface, and then we would provide the implementation of that method within this anonymous class. We could also extend some class, and we could also use the trait. So as you can see, anonymous classes can be structured same way as regular classes. Now, just because you don't define the name of the anonymous class, it does not mean it has no name. The name gets generated and assigned by the engine. So let me remove this so we don't get any errors. We can use a function called get class to find out what the name of the object is. So I'll clear this out, run the code again. So as you can see, the name gets assigned by the engine, but I would not rely on this name. So always assume that anonymous classes have no name. And because anonymous classes have no name, you cannot type hint them. So for example, if we had another function here called foo and we were accepting an object as an argument, we cannot type hint this to this anonymous class because anonymous class is not named. However, what you can do is that you can implement an interface as I mentioned before and simply type hint the interface here. And now when we call the method foo, we can pass the object and this will work. Let me create that interface quick so that I can demonstrate and let's var dump object here here and let's run the code we see that everything is working and we have type hinted the object to the interface. You can also use anonymous classes within regular classes so you can sort of nest them. Let's create some class with some properties and methods. So I'm going to delete this from here and I'm simply going to create an object of class A and let's create this class in the app namespace and let's have a couple of properties here public int x public int y and then let's add a method called foo that simply returns foo and then let's add a method bar that returns an instance of an anonymous class so we could do new class curly braces and semicolon now we can type hint this to return an object and as I was mentioning before that you cannot really type hint the classes what you can type hint is just the object because essentially when you're doing new class it's returning an object of the anonymous class so you cannot type hint the specific anonymous class unless you use inheritance or interfaces but you could still type hint that it's returning an object so let's go to index.php and let's pass in one and two and let's var dump object bar. Let's clear this out. Let's run the code and we see that everything is working and it's returning an instance of an anonymous class. The thing to note here is that within the anonymous class you cannot access the properties and methods of the main class. So we need this class. Let's say we have a constructor. We cannot do something like echo the property x or property y. It's not going to work because this here is referring to the anonymous class itself and it's not referring to the outer class so it will not be able to access any of the properties of the main class or the methods so we cannot call the method foo and so on what you can do instead is that if you want to have access to these properties you can simply pass them down to constructor or you could extend class a in your anonymous class so we can do extends class a and now we can simply accept the same arguments here and call the parent construct 
passing in x and y and then you can do your custom logic here or whatever you need to do and now we could also access the method foo because we're extending the class a if you don't want to use inheritance and you don't want to extend then you have two options you could either pass down properties as arguments in the constructor so you could do something like this this x this y and then accept them here and actually we need to pass down the arguments here this way even when using inheritance because we're expecting x and y in the constructor and when we were not passing anything here this would cause an error so if i open terminal and run the code we get the fatal error that we're not passing enough arguments so we need to pass in those arguments in the constructor because we're expecting them here and then run it again and now everything is working and let's make sure that this function call works Works as well we can simply echo this out and run the code again and we see that it's printing full right here so let's get rid of the inheritance and we can remove the extents from here and we can do var dump x and y and let's run the code and as you can see it works the other option would be to simply pass down the current object so you could pass down the entire object so this sounds cool but what are the actual use cases for this the main use case for anonymous classes i think is testing it lets you create one-off objects based on an anonymous class then you can have the anonymous class implement interface or extend an abstract class or simply use a trait and structure it based on your test needs it is very useful when it comes to mocking we haven't covered testing and php unit yet so i won't get into that now but we'll get into testing soon enough there are a few other use cases for anonymous classes but i personally have not used them outside of testing here are the three key points from the rfc that implemented this feature in php one as i mentioned is mocking second is you're keeping usage of these classes outside of the scope that they are defined in and third is that it is a micro optimization where it avoids hitting the autoloader for simple implementations so this was it for this video thank you so much for watching if you like my tutorials and want to see more please give the videos that you like a thumbs up it really helps me with the youtube's algorithm thanks again and i'll see you next time